Hardly any other region in the world is accompanied by as many mysteries as the legendary Easter Island. The isolated islands in the Southeast Pacific have long given rise to the most breathtaking legends. Above all, it's the colossal stone statues on Easter Island that have puzzled scientists for quite a long time. These statues have left scientists baffled for many years. Today, we'll be covering many of the secrets of Easter Island, as well as others, and show you the many unsolved mysteries of the so-called Moai. Before we jump into it, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around for number one if you want to hear one of the most bizarre mysteries of all time. The Moai Riddle the most pressing questions that arise when faced with these fascinating stone statues are who created the Moai, what purpose did the gigantic objects serve, and what happened to the creators of these fabled creations? While science has had no answer to these hot questions for a long time, it now seems as if we've come much closer to solving the Easter Island riddle. Before we get into this exciting topic, however, we should first take a look at the island itself. Officially, Easter Island belongs to Chile, but from a geographical point of view, it's been attributed more to Polynesia. The isolated existence of the island becomes even stranger when we consider how far away the closest mainland is. If we look more closely at this, the distance between the Chilean coast and the isolated island is more than 3,500 kilometers. The next inhabited island, the island of Pitcairn, is at a distance of more than 2,000 kilometers. Needless to say, Easter Island is one of the most remote islands in the world. This makes it all the more puzzling when thinking about how people could have settled here so long ago and why they would have chosen this island rather than setting up camp on the mainland. Despite this remote geographical location, Easter Island serves around 7,750 residents as a permanent home even to this day. The island has a manageable area of just 162 and a half square kilometers. As already mentioned a moment ago, it's the countless Moai statues that have always made Easter Island the center of public and scientific interest. To date, 887 of these unique stone figures have been found on the island. However, current estimates assume that the island was once adorned by more than a thousand of these colossi. Since the experts didn't find any contemporary written records while researching the Moai, the exact age of the figures isn't known, and we don't fully understand what period of time these statues would have come from. Guesses from historians range from a few hundred years to a few thousand years, and it seems that this mystery deepens each time historians try to uncover the truth. However, most researchers suspect that the colossal figures were likely created around the year 1400. This is roughly the point in time when the culture of the indigenous people began to intermingle with more modern settlers. Thanks to their characteristic design, the Moai can be easily distinguished from other time-honored stone figures. With their long noses, square ears, angular jaws, and deep-set eyes, the colossi have an unmistakable appearance. Appearance. What is particularly interesting is that for many centuries, people were firmly convinced that the Moai consisted exclusively of their gigantic heads. However, later excavations brought the surprising discovery that the bodies of the imposing statues were hidden in the ground for all these years. The Fascinating Shape of the Stone Colossi the fact that the heads alone make up about a third of the size of the statues is particularly striking. While at first it seems as if the individual statues are all identical, a closer look at the details shows that the respective figures have clear differences between one another. Accordingly, the individual figures sometimes have different hand positions as well, suggesting that each statue was purposefully created to be unique. The knots that adorn the loincloth that some of the statues are wearing were also individually designed. 
In addition to this, there are many indications that some of the Moai once wore a so-called pukao on their head. In a museum in Greenwich, for example, there's a painting from 1775 which depicts the Moai with their corresponding headgear. It's uncertain whether these pukaos were ultimately a ceremonial headdress or a simple top hat, so to speak. Since only very few stone colossi were provided with this type of headgear, it seems as though these statues were special for one reason or another, but this reasoning has never been fully uncovered. The average size of the figures is around 4 meters, while on average they weigh an impressive 12 and a half tons. The largest upright statue comes to a height of almost 10 meters. In addition to this, the researchers found a 21-meter tall moai on Easter Island, which, however, was never completed. This statue is by far one of the largest to have ever been found on the island. For the creation of these legendary figures, the builders used the island's natural resources to bring these statues to life. Almost all of the moai are made from basalt, red tuff, and trachyte, a special volcanic rock. The necessary building materials were removed from the slopes of the Rano Raraku volcano. What is particularly interesting is the fact that almost all the moai are looking inland. Very few, if any, are looking out towards the ocean. This orientation therefore gives rise to the assumption that the giant figures were supposed to guard and protect the islanders. Only a few moai deviate from this scheme. One of the most exciting stone figures was christened Tukuturi. This is the only known statue on Easter Island that shows a kneeling posture. Some researchers believe that this unique figure represents a ritual singer. The position of the stone figure is similar to the posture that people took on holy festivals. The true purpose of this particular statue has never been confirmed. However, the aforementioned singer pose is the best guess of many historians. How could the statues be moved? When Europeans first set foot on Easter Island in the early 18th century, they couldn't believe their eyes. The seafarers found a population of only a few thousand people on the island. The question quickly arose how so few people had managed to make hundreds of figures weighing tons and then distribute them all over the island. One of the most adventurous and controversial theories even assumes that the massive statues were created by aliens and then moved using futuristic technology. As already mentioned, however, closer investigations revealed that the material from which the Moai were built undoubtedly came from Easter Island itself. Despite this, the exciting question remains how the gigantic objects were transported many centuries ago. Scientists also want to find out the answer to this question. By all means, this mystery is as puzzling as the many mysteries surrounding the Egyptian pyramids. For this purpose, a team of researchers built one of the statues in the 1980s with the tools that were available to the people of the time. At first, it seemed like an impossible undertaking to then transport the completed object. But soon afterward, a team of American archaeologists managed to move a 10-ton replica with relative ease, all things considered. So it turned out that the builders of the Moai had probably managed to bring the figures to their intended positions with the help of ropes and pure physical strength. To support this thesis, the scientists moved the massive statue in this way over a distance of around 300 meters. Well, this is certainly far less than the distance between some of the real statues, some of which are miles apart. It's certainly a great start at understanding how these statues would have been relocated all those years ago. What happened to the Moai builders? The question remains how the few indigenous people of Easter Island managed to produce so many gigantic stone colossi. To get to the bottom of this mystery, a team of researchers carried out a scientific study to reconstruct the maximum number of inhabitants during the island's heyday. The work finally yielded a surprising finding. In fact, up to 17,500 residents could have lived on Easter Island in the years surrounding the creation of 
these statues. Around 20% of the island could have been covered by agricultural land, which ensured the food supply for the inhabitants. In addition to agriculture, fishing also played a central role in supplying the population with sustenance. But how did it come about that this emerging civilization almost completely disappeared over the years? If you were to follow one of the most widespread theories, the indigenous people ultimately dug their own grave. Large areas of forest were likely to have been cut down to make room for the Moai. The residents most likely believed that the plants would grow back quickly enough not to upset the island's sensitive climate. This assumption, however, wasn't true at all. The worsened environmental situation would have led to severe hunger crises and civil wars were likely to have broken out. However, this is only one of several conceivable theories. Many scientists currently consider it most likely that the builders of the Moai fell victim to external influences rather than themselves. On one hand, this includes dangerous pathogens that were brought to Easter Island by European seafarers. But island raids, during which the Europeans were looking for new slaves, could have led to the rapid population decline as well. What we must keep in mind is that during the prime of Easter Island, humans were a very different species. By all means, humans were animals that would be willing to kill anyone for virtually any reason, facing very few consequences as a result. People would travel from island to island and would either enslave the people that live there or claim their lives, then claim their land for themselves. With this in mind, we'll most likely never know for sure what happened to the inhabitants of Easter Island. The theory that they created their own demise is certainly a captivating theory. However, the more likely cause for their disappearance was that they were simply captured or taken down by Europeans. The Purpose of the Statues While we've now taken a look at the history of the Moai and their builders, we'd like to conclude with one more pressing question. What was the purpose of the gigantic stone figures? Despite extensive investigations, the exciting secret still has not been fully revealed. What's certain is that the statues were not originally erected by themselves, but rather represented parts of ceremonial sites called Ahu. Typically, these sacred structures would have been built between a village and the coast. The researchers are currently assuming that every settlement on Easter Island also had its own sacred ceremonial complex. The center of this site would have been the Moai figure, which was enthroned on a raised platform. In front of it was a ramp covered with pebbles that led to a leveled area. The Moai probably represented time-honored tribal chiefs or sacred ancestors of the islanders. According to the belief of the indigenous population, they may have functioned as a link between the earthly world and the realm of the dead. This assumption is also supported by some historical reports. The relevant documents tell of the fact that the Ahus once also housed burial chambers. The islanders had very specific means of burying their dead. They would take the body of the deceased and then wrap them in a special type of mat. Once the body was skeletonized, the remains were placed in a special chamber on a sacred site. So it's conceivable that the impressive Moai also acted as guardians of the dead. In all likelihood, however, this particular form of burial was only given to the most important members of society. With this in mind, it seems unlikely that the statues would have been erected in honor of fallen common folk. Instead, there's a chance that each of the statues may have been erected to represent a fallen hero from one of the many settlements on the island. If this is true, it may explain why each of the statues is slightly unique from all of the others. This would also explain why some of them were wearing headdresses and others weren't. At the end of it all, this is nothing more than a theory, and the true mystery behind these strange stone statues will likely never be solved. Let us know what you think. What are your thoughts on the fascinating Moai statues on Easter Island? Share your thoughts and theories in the comments. We may never really know what happened to the people who lived there, or why these strange statues seem to have held such importance to the inhabitants. However, we can share our theories and maybe 
together come up with a solid idea of what could have happened on this strange island all those years ago. But before you click away, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. That's all for now. We'll catch you guys in the next video.